Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Redevelopment Board meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, this is the September 18th, 2023 meeting. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I am the chair of the Redevelopment Board. If I could have the other members of the board please introduce themselves. Steve Rebelak. Eugene Benson. Ken Lau. And we also have the Director of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker, with us this evening. Um, I will um, try and project. I know that we don't have uh, mics that, that uh, pick up our, our voice, so I would encourage anyone um, who is having difficulty hearing to, to please move to the front of the room. We do have some HVAC that's a little bit loud in this room today. Is your um, microphone even on? It is on to pick up for the ACMI, but it is not a microphone that projects in this room. We don't have that capability in this room. So at uh, this time, we'd like to move to the uh, public hearing um, for docket number 3766, 351 Broadway. We are reopening um, this, this docket number. Uh, this was originally um, uh, moved to this evening uh, from when it was originally scheduled. And I believe that we have the applicant with us this evening. So I'd like to um, first uh, provide the applicant with up to 10 minutes for an introductory presentation. Uh, then I will turn it over to uh, Claire Ricker, who will provide an overview on behalf of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Members of the board will then um, uh, have an opportunity to ask the applicant questions. We'll then move to uh, public comment, where any member of the public who is interested in providing comment this evening will have an opportunity. And then we'll move back to the board for uh, deliberation and uh, a decision as to whether or not we'll be able to take a vote this evening. So with that, I'd like to invite the applicant to please uh, join us here um, in the front of the room. And we will, um, Claire, if you wouldn't mind turning your microphone around, maybe um, Ken and I can share our mic. Oh, Great, thank you so much, Sean. I feel like I'm close enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great, so if well, you could sure. please introduce I I yourself. I wasn't and expecting to, uh, to talk, so. Um, Just a brief overview would be great. Mitchell. I own thank a you. company called SRP Sound Corporation. I've owned it for 37 years. And um, Thai Moon is a lovely Thai restaurant that's in, already has been on to, and they had a fire and they moved and COVID happened. I mean, they, they went out and COVID happened and they're back in the space. Um, that there was a pasta place, I think it was Twist. Okay. And owned by ACS Development, Patricia Simbley. Um, they currently have a uh, temporary sign, which looks very similar to this, but does not light. And I believe the reason that we're here is because the lighting, um, I, I understand the light, this type of lighting requires a special permit just in its nature of being uh, channel letters. Is that what's happening? The owner uh, tells me that it's unnecessary, but I don't know. The external lighting? The, 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 these are internally illuminated. Correct. Right? Yes. And yes. So because They're halo that, I guess it yes. requires special. Okay. So um, these letters, uh, proposed channel letters, are what we call reverse halo, uh, reverse channel letters, meaning that the, the, uh, the letters are opaque. They're fabricated from aluminum. They're, there's lights inside, and it's secondary lighting that's shining against the wall, creating a halo. Um, right, we're gonna, we propose to create that background, which is about 10 feet long, uh, by two feet high, that will attach to existing structure. Um, and that's it, no power. You will see, I mean, you won't see power, you won't see um, any hardware or fasteners, and um, it should be pretty seamless and, and attractive, I think. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'd like to turn it over to um, Claire Ricker for any comments on behalf of the department. Sure, thank you. Um, so this is a, an application, um, obviously, for sign at, at Time Moon. Um, the height, uh, they are seeking relief to exceed the maximum width um, for signage in this area. Um, and they are, uh, and this is an internally eliminated sign, so it's under the ju jurisdiction um, of the ARB. They may also need relief on the 60% rule related to storefront um, signage. But the width. Excuse okay. me, the width, that's yeah. correct. Um, and as well as on the awning. Thanks. Great, thank you very much. 
Um, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over to members of the board for any questions or preliminary comments, starting with Ken. Um, I, when I look at the streetscape there, there's plenty of signs that's already uh, internally lit there too. I think Cafe Nero and uh, Brickstone Pizza and a few others on either side of them, so I don't see an issue with uh, this being uh, internally lit. Uh, and I think uh, the design of this fits in uh, quite well with, uh, with the rest of uh, the neighbors there. So as far as the awning and uh, internally lit, I have no issues. I'm going to leave it up to the rest of the board uh, to talk about the size. Um, if it's a little smaller, I'm not uh, opposed to that or opposed to just leaving it as is. I think I'm on the fence on that one there. Great. So I'll let the rest of the board see what they say. Great. Thank you, Ken. Jean? I, I don't quite understand how this is going to be lit. Can you explain? Oh, sure. How Actually, if you don't mind, can I ask you to Not switch pages? Okay, if you go to the section, that's the one right there. Zoom out a little bit. Right. So um, I'll stand up and show you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, this is a, uh, sorry if I'm, I don't botch things with the camera here. So this is an existing structure. This is a section. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> of, uh, of the existing structure. Right. These are rails that are there now. Actually, if you want to go back to, to um, the picture above. Uh, actually, the, the, the next one, the, the other direction. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. You can see, um, yeah, right here. Oh, no, nope, at the glasses place. You were there. Yeah. Yep. You, can you see those those uh, rails? Right. So those are there now behind this sign. So uh, we can go back to the section. Sorry. Uh, so these are the rails, right? And we're going to fabricate this is a backer, right? That's the background for the sign, and it'll be one color. And then this here is a section of the letter. The letter is, is all aluminum, fabricated, right, opaque. But the back of it is clear. Inside the letter is LED lights. The letter, the, the lights shine, and the, as you can see, the letters are spaced off the, uh, the sign by an inch or an inch and a quarter, um, inch and a half spacers. And um, effectively pushing the light against the backer, which makes a halo effect. You've seen it, I'm sure, there everywhere. So if I were, if this were there, and I were to walk up to it, could I actually see the light? Oh, no. Lights are inside the letters. You can't see the light source. Mm -hmm. No. No, secondary lighting. So just bouncing off the back wall? That's right, 100%. And, okay. Uh, that's the only question I have. Great. Thank you, Gene. Uh, Steve? Uh, I just have one question um, regarding these, and it's just really um, regarding the relief for the width. Um, the third, the, the, for the standard, the wall placement standards for a wall sign, um, each side has to have 12 inches or 20%, whichever is less. So this is a 13 foot wide storefront, so the maximum allowed width, as I read it, would be 11 feet. Uh, they're proposing 11 feet 7 inches, so it looks like we're 7 inches too over, 132 inches versus 139. I believe that's correct. Okay. That was, um... I, I don't think it's 139. Can you, can you go to this, the dimensions? I thought it was 120, uh, uh, I was reading something wrong. Oh, 139. Just the letters. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, that's the only thing I wanted to clarify. I, I, I mean, I, I think I would say that, um, the other signs on the, on the block are consistent with it. The, they're all basically the same size as the storefront. They're, and that, that, um, what you're talking about the six inches on either side of the foot or 12 inches on either side. I don't think anyone's um, doing that. But, but they sure. all may be existing non-conforming, but the, yeah. again, the plan of sure. the board is to bring things into sure. compliance when we when we should. Uh, please. I want to stay finished. Okay. Steve, did you have any other um, questions? Nothing further. Okay. Um, the question that I have is regarding the, if you go to the, um, Claire, the if you scroll down to the to the photo, uh, the existing photo there, um, right there, there are uh, gooseneck lights above the sign currently. Right. You're planning on taking those out? 
I think the owner is planning on taking those out. It would not be in, in my scope that their electrician would do it, but I think the answer is yes. Okay. I think that would be part of our, um, at least for me, part of the contingent approval is to not have I, two I sources agree. of yeah, light, but to remove no the conduit, patch and repair, and um, et cetera. Okay. Um, that was my question. Please. Oh, that was your question? Sorry. That's okay. Great. Uh, any other questions for the applicant before we move to uh, public comment? All right. Uh, at this time, uh, any member of the public who has any comment, um, would like to make any comment on this application, please raise your hand. Great. Uh, so we will uh, start with this gentleman right here. Um, I will uh, let everyone know that you will have up to three minutes to address the board. Please introduce, introduce yourself by your first, last name, and address. So if you wouldn't mind um, just, yes, moving to the chair right behind that, and we will ask um, anyone who's addressing the board this evening to join us in this chair right up here so that you, the microphone can pick you up. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. I'm Michael Ruderman. I live at 9 Alton Street, which is right around the corner from this location. We're probably the nearest or the second nearest uh, residential abutters. I like the design. I like the fact that it's going to be internally lit. I don't see that there's any possibility of, of broad light spillage over the plaza. Uh, nothing that's going to leak back back around the corner. So I'm in favor of it. Uh, I was going to ask the same point that I believe the chair brought up about cleaning up uh, the, the, the cornice by removing the non-functioning uh, uh, light heads there and uh, restoring a, a clean and finished look above it. We're very happy that Time Moon has found a new location and uh, we'll take over the space of the late lamented twirl. Uh, it's great, great to see the storefront going to use. I just had one question. I was wondering if, if anything else in the original uh, special permit is available for, for questioning. I had a question about traffic patterns in and out. Uh, is, is that any part of uh, the hearing tonight? It's been, it's been something uh, in the neighborhood on our minds. Uh, as of now, the board is only taking up the issue of the, the sign a, okay. as part of this hearing right now. Okay. But thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, my name is Carl Wagner. I live on Edge Hill Road. I'm a town meeting member from Precinct 15. I, I think this is great to see Time Moon coming back. I'm only sorry, I don't know if ACMI can pan around to the paltry showing of people on this particularly wet night who are here who could offer their support. And I really have to say the uh, ARB deserves to give Arlington hybrid, hybrid meetings. Uh, there is another me, issue coming the tonight. Of this, uh, you are you preventing have, if public you have input. Any, if you have any comment on this particular yes. um, application, this, you are more than welcome I'm to give it to I'm glad to see the now. word tie and moon with the nice uh, crescent moon there. And I think Arlington deserves to be able to comment to you and see what you're doing on this wonderful proposal and on the future things that you're going to address this evening. Many other ARB type boards you are have already scope. gone to hybrid. If you have anything to I'm add about scope. this Thank hearing. you very much. Thank I hope people will insist that this ARB go to hybrid You are meetings. all set. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. very much. Are there any other comments this evening? Thank you very much. Um, so at that point, we'll close public comment on this hearing and we'll bring it back to the board for discussion. And I will start with Jean. Um, I'm in favor of this. I think it meets the um, criteria to allow us to do a larger sign because of the architecture of the building and the location of the building relative to the street. I think if the sign was smaller, the letters would disappear. Um, and so I, I'm in favor of that. I think it meets the standard. Um, the standard for the light, which is why I asked the question, is you're allowed to have internally illuminated signs unless there's a directly exposed light source, and there's none here. So I'm in favor of this. I agree with the chair about removing the goose leg, goose neck lamps above it. Great, thank you. Uh, Steve? Um, I am also in favor of this. The, I mean, in terms of the relief thought, it's a small number of inches. Um, there is also a little bit of relief for the width of the awning sign, but they're taking up half the area that they could, so I'm, I think that's a fair trade. So. so I actually do want to clarify for the board what the relief saw is, because um, it's, it's bigger, I think, than, than 
we, oh, okay. we discussed. So what they're what they're seeking um, for the sign width for for the awning, they are allowed uh, on the awning for that to be sixty percent of the width of the awning mm -hmm. um, as the maximum length of the sign, and the same. So the um, the twelve inches or sorry, let me just go back down to the other section here with regard to the um, building it sign itself the the 12 inches or 20% um, is actually the vertical um, dimension uh, there, there is the same on on the side but it also indicates that the max is um, 60 inches or 60% of the building width again the way that this is written I think that the 12 inches we oh. could we could um, we could get to so um, uh, and we could find that that is appropriate. Do you see that one, Gene? That's on. Yes, I saw it. Yep. Um, so uh, it's actually a little bit more for the awning that they're mm -hmm. that they're looking for right. in terms of relief than yeah. on the sign itself. Um, if we take the 12 inches, it's I think uh, just a few inches over as it as it's shown right now. Yeah, the, the, the building the, sign. With the awning, um, they're allowed. My point was that they're allowed one uh, square foot of sign per linear foot of awning, so 13, um, 13 square feet ish. Um, and this one, I, it looks like it's not quite five square feet, right, right. so it's it's a lot less. Kim, I'm fine with it. Uh, I'm willing to make a motion. Uh, okay, so we would. Uh, let me craft a motion here. Make it back to my screen. Is there a motion to approve uh, docket number three seven six six for three fifty one Broadway, with the caveat that the uh, applicant remove the exterior existing exterior lights and uh, associated conduit? And patch and repair the um, facade after those are removed. So, motion as uh, amended. Is there a second? I, I second that. And I, we should just make a finding that the sign that we're doing this under uh, section C1 um, for a special sign for me. Great, thank you. Uh, seeing a second, we will take a roll call vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing Time Moon return to Arlington. Yes. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So at this time, I'd like to um, move to our second agenda item, which is the public hearing for the Warren Articles for Fall 2023 Special Town Meeting. Before we begin, I will run through the procedures for this evening. So this is the second of three nights of hearing for a total of 10 Warren articles. Consistent with the past, the ARB will be hearing from uh, the public wishing to speak on these articles as scheduled and only on the articles that are scheduled this evening. So those are the nine that are currently on the agenda. The board will pose any questions to the applicants, but will reserve deliberation and voting on recommended action on each article until the last night of hearings, which is October 2nd. As I mentioned before, the subject matter of the hearing is as posted in the agenda. We will be hearing comment on the nine articles listed tonight. We will not take a comment on articles that are not posted on this evening's agenda. Anyone wishing to address the redevelopment board on the subject matter of the agenda shall signify that you wish to speak by raising your hand when I announce public comment period is open for each of those articles. After being recognized to speak, you will preface your comments by giving your first last name and your Arlington Street address. Anyone addressing the board shall limit your comments or your remarks to two minutes. We will most likely, excuse me, this evening we most likely will be able to get to all of the speakers. Uh, but again, I will keep close track of the time. We will close public comment um, after each one of the articles has been completed. We uh, welcome anyone who uh, has additional items that they would like to share with the board to please submit comments in writing. Uh, we will accept comments, obviously, through town meeting, um, and they are particularly useful as we approach our October 2nd uh, deliberation and voting date. Uh, 
Attendees of public comment uh, shall not applaud or otherwise express approval or disapproval of any statements made or any action taking place during the he hearing this evening. Shall also refrain from interrupting speakers and everyone should conduct themselves in a civil and courteous manner. If an individual repeatedly fails to adhere to this requirement, they will be asked to remove themselves from the public hearing. Speakers should address all questions through myself as the chair. Uh, they should not attempt to engage in debate or dialogue with uh, members or other hearing participants. As uh, typical, I will take questions uh, from applicants and save them all until the end of the hearing, and then I will uh, address them at the, uh, at the end. If we determine that there is a clarification required, we'll call on the appropriate person to provide a clarification during the public hearing. Uh, at this time, let's go ahead and move into our uh, second agenda item now, which is uh, the warrant articles for fall 2023 special town meeting. So we will start with article B. And uh, what I'd like to do this evening um, is have uh, Gene present each of the articles. He was kind enough to draft um, together with Claire the, um, the uh, the draft war uh, main motion language for each of these articles. So I will turn it over to Jean to introduce Article B, which is a zoning by law amendment related to open space in the business districts. Yeah, thank you, and thank you to both Claire and Rachel for working with me on these. This fr and none of these are ones where we've actually ever approved the main motions before. Mm -hmm. So this is in some way the f this is the first time we're going to be discussing them. This first one, the open space in the business districts, I did not draft. It was drafted by Kelly Linema in anticipation of our bringing this to town meeting in the spring. But then, as you know, we didn't bring it to town meeting in the spring. I did change it in, in a couple of minor ways, one of which was an error that I'll tell you about. But, um, what, what this proposes to do in capsule form is right now one can have landscaped open space on a balcony or a roof as long, it's not, as long as it's not more than 10 feet above the level of the lowest story used for dwelling purposes. When we had a conversation in the spring, it, we decided it didn't make any sense at all to determine where on the building the open space the landscape space could be. In fact, some of you may have seen photos from around the world that have little green pockets all up and down the sides of buildings and how nice they look and how they add to the green space on the streetscape. So this would allow the opportunity um, to do that with the open green space. Um, some of the other changes which we had not discussed and I just put them in because Kelly had put them in, were to get rid of the requirement that open space is deemed usable only if at least 75% of the area has a grade of at least 8%, which we'll need to discuss. Now, I accidentally, on the next page, deleted section 5.3.22C. That section should not be deleted. It's the bottom of the page. Instead, what it should say is, for the purposes of this bylaw, the district dimensional requirements for usable open space and landscape open space in all districts except the business district are calculated based on gross floor area. For the business district, see 5.5.2B. I'll send that to you, Claire, afterward if you don't have it. And the only other change for that is you'll notice at the end of 5.5.2b at the bottom of the chart it says in the business districts the district's dimensional requirements for landscaped open space and usable open space are calculated based on the lot area which is what we have talked about many times the the only other difference between what um, is here and, um, well, actually, there's no other difference between what's here and what um, Kelly had put into the draft 
bylaw. So that's what it is. So basically, if we did this, we would allow and encourage, in some ways, green space up and down the building sides, on balconies, on roofs. We would delete the requirement for usable open space for some um, parts of the business district because for mixed use in the business district. And we had decided to do that because usable open space doesn't have to be green space at all. And very often it could be um, pavement, asphalt, whatever the building owner wanted it to be. And it didn't make any sense that buildings were constrained that way. And that's why when we discussed this maybe a year ago, we determined that for mixed use and other permitted uses, usable open space was really not a necessary concept. So that's that. Great. Thank you, Jean. Uh, we'll start with Ken for any uh, questions or comments. I have none. Great. Thank you. Steve? Um, I'm, thank you for the clarification that uh, the percentage of lot area is only in the B districts and not the R districts. Right. Um, I would, that was the one concern I have, but it is no longer a concern. That's all, that is all Madam Chair. Great, thank you. Um, and I appreciate that we also made that clarification to confirm that we are prioritizing landscaped open space in the uh, non-residential uses in the business district. Uh, any other comments before we open um, this particular article up for uh, public comment? All right, seeing none, uh, if there are any members of the public who wish to provide comment, please raise your hands, please. And I will ask again, um, if, uh, Claire, if we could just move that chair a little bit closer, um, we will, thank you so much, appreciate it. Um, we will ask that uh, anyone who's speaking with us, please uh, come to, to the chair here so we can pick you up on the microphone. Um, reminder again, please introduce yourself by first, last name, and address, and you'll have up to two minutes. Hi, I'm Laurel Kane. My address is 79 Westmoreland Ave. And um, I have to say, I'm not super well versed in this stuff. Um, so, and I've never been to one of these. But in just looking at it and hearing what you said, I have to say the lay person, which is who I am, would understand open space to be not a balcony or a roof. And so I just am wondering what is at the root of this. And it feels, again, at a distance, to be a way of allowing businesses to reduce what I would consider to be open space by implementing, say, a roof garden or a balcony garden. And those are lovely things. But I would hate to see those implemented at the expense of what I would view as actual open space on the ground that one could consider sort of visual or appreciable open space. That's all. Thank you very much. I Thank appreciate you. it. Okay. Any others? Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm I'm Carl Wagner from. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. What was the? I can't hear anything. Okay, I apologize. We don't have microphones that project. Let me just restart your time, Carl. Just give me one second. Um, so I will just ask anyone who's speaking, and again, that's not going to project. So if you could please put the microphone on the counter. Can ACMI hear me? If the microphone yes, is he, too he absolutely can. It's pointed at your mouth and picks you up. Okay. Please leave the microphone. Okay. Um, he can't he can't be picked up so um, again I would just ask everyone project and again there are seats that are closer so please feel free to move closer to the front we're gonna do our best to project please go ahead thank you madam chair I must admit uh, as I begin my comments the opinion of a lot of people is that all of this is suppressing public comment I'm very unhappy to hear that but thank you for letting me speak I'd like to point out that article B is one of the 2019 density articles the 2019 density articles, despite six months of public input and lots of public meetings by the director of planning at the time, were determined by town meeting and the people of Arlington to be inappropriate for Arlington and not properly prepared. Particularly, town meeting said that uh, articles like this, which remove open space in the business districts, will be ridiculous. The idea of balconies and roofs being open space, which is what this does. And the, the town meeting said to the ARB, we will not support this. 
and Andrew Bunnell, the chair of the ARB, made a famous uh, speech, which is available at video2019.arfer.org. You can still see it on YouTube, where he said, we apologize. The ARB will not bring mes messages like this or, or articles like this to the town meeting or to the people unless we have your buy-in and you're adequately aware of this. And I would ask you, Madam Chair, how many public meetings for articles B through J have you had? The answer is zero. This is being rushed through on a rainy night with a few people hearing it. Whereas in 2019, when we said no to you because it wasn't properly prepared, there were three to six months of meetings. This is absolutely ridiculous. People should not be saying open spaces, balconies, and roofs when we have a climate crisis and we need to save our permeable spaces, our open spaces for renters and for residents. And this business districts would affect many, many uses beyond business, such as, as the uh, mixed use. This is absolutely wrong. B through J deserve to be publicly heard by the people and the town meeting. I ask you to reject it and send it back until you've had the director of planning offering to the people of Arlington and the town meeting. Your time is up. Thank you. Adequate hearing. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Yeah. Please come. I'm Elizabeth Carr Jones. I live at Wadley High Street here in Arlington. Um, I have some concerns about this. This is a lot I probably don't understand. But um, one, I would have the question, you know, does this uh, elimination of the open space requirement for certain uh, properties in the business districts, oops, sorry, um, does it um, mean that that space would be built upon? In other words, not used for something that might actually be uh, of more use to the community, like um, you know, places where where people can gather in cafes or uh, or, or you know, outdoor seating, um, that sort of thing. Um, you know, is I understand this is not a requirement for um, this open space to be um, to be green, but you know, if it's if it's going to be built seems to me that's to the detriment of the town in terms of the you know the overall open space that we have available as a community okay Thanks. thank you very much uh, any other speakers this evening please thank you madam chair Chris Loretti 56 Adam Street I had understood this to be in um, public hearing with a time certain at 8 o'clock, so I miss, missed Mr. Benson's comments. I'm making my comments based on the revised version of the articles as they were posted this morning. Um, first, I would suggest that the changes to the definition go beyond the scope of the article in that they also apply to non-business districts. This article is specific, supposed to be focused specifically on business districts, but when you change the definition, those definitions also apply to residential districts. What that will allow, and I object to this both for residential districts and multi-story districts, is usable open space on the roof of multi-story buildings, usable, usable open space uh, on lot, area, uh, lot areas that are very steep. I can see people um, in residential districts trying to claim that their roofs are now usable open space simply because they have access to them. Uh, I don't think there's any reason why apartment buildings or condos should be exempt from the usable open space requirements merely because they are built in a B district rather than R district. That's what you've come up with with this type of um, change that you're proposing. And finally, I would say that you're, um, by making the changes as they appeared this morning, you provided an explanation that usable open space um, for business districts is based on the lot area. Now there's no explanation at all of what it's based on for the residential areas. You, you missed that. We're yeah. correcting that. Okay. Well, um, I think that covers it for me. But I, I, I think this one um, really is not ready for prime time. I hope you'll reject it. Thank you. Uh, any other comments this evening? Please. My name is Joanne Cullinane, 69 Newland Road. Um, I just want to say, echo the sentiments of the, of the previous speakers that 
this seems like a reduction, another yet another blow to like a reduction of green space for the town as a whole. Um, and I guess I'll keep it brief. It seems like we're trying to pave over uh, everything in town, uh, every square inch, and it just seems wrongheaded. Um, and I oppose it. Thank you. Any other speakers? Please. Uh, my name is Ratnakar Velanki. I live at 21 Adams Street. Uh, I am in support, I'm speaking in support of this article. Um, I just want to remind, uh, or, or just, you know, uh, make it clear to everyone that we need to move along with times. And this is how an LED or a site, you know, the, the authorities, bodies that certify, uh, you know, uh, projects, right? So they consider this open space, you know, roof. Um, and, and let's forget about all, all those certifying bodies, right? Let's come back to basics. What is an open space? As long as it's open to public, it's a space, it's an open space. We live in a three-dimensional world. We forget that, you know, height is also a dimension, right? Uh, you know, we have farmed on rice terraces vertically, right? If we can do that, why can't we consider roof terraces? And let's use the third dimension of this planet as well and, 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 and you know, consider that open space. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers, please? Matt Miller, uh, 42 Columbia Road, Arlington. Um, I understand what you're saying about um, three-dimensional space, but a rooftop is not accessible by everyone. I think that accessible green space is what I can access. And if it, everything is on the roof, then how much green space is there for the public? I question that that is appropriate use of the land. And I wonder if maybe uh, that should be open for discussion from the people in the town. I also think that um, I moved to Arlington. No, I know I moved to Arlington because this is not Somerville. There is not sidewalks everywhere. There's a reason. There's also better schools. If we have a lot of people moving into this city, what are we gonna do about the schools? What are we gonna do about the high school? I think that we were planning ahead with a bigger high school. I think that if we overfill it already, I don't think that's appropriate use of, of the town resources. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Please. Kristen Anderson, uh, 12 Upland Road West. And um, I just want to ask the board um, to be cognizant of the fact that um, since the pandemic happened, people have been um, congregating outdoors more, especially um, it's, it's wonderful when we can eat outdoors um, and avoid uh, transmission of uh, uh, illness. Um, and it would be great if we had more outdoor seating um, for people to uh, to eat out front restaurants. That's all that I would ask because I do that all the time. Um, I ate outdoors, uh, for instance, most recently um, outside Trist, and it's not as pleasant to sit in the street um, as it would be on a nice terrace, especially if there if you could be under a tree. And this is why um, my favorite place to go is Kickstand Cafe, because they have that awesome outdoor terrace that you can be underneath the trees. Um, so I would ask the board to find ways to encourage more outdoor um, seating um, for outdoor cafes and restaurants. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, so at this time, uh, for Article B, I will turn discussion back to the board. Again, we'll save deliberation for October 2nd. Um, I think that there were a few clarifications that were warranted, and Jean, I'm not sure if you wanted to um, tackle some of these. There were questions around, um, let's see, uh, whether or not, well, what, I think one item to note is that for usable open space, um, usable open space does not necessarily, if that 
uh, remains, that does not necessarily mean that it is open to the uh, public. Uh, there's no requirement that easements are provided. There are no requirements that easements are provided by the by the owner. It could be for um, the the uses the use of the um, the uh, those who are either working or living within that building at all. So I just want to make that clear that um, it does not necessarily mean that it is open to the public. Any other clarifications? Yeah, I think I think the other two other clarifications. The bylaw now allows landscape open space to be on a balcony or a roof. It just limits the height. What this would do is get rid of that height so you could have the whole building with green space if you wanted to. So some of that is currently in in the bylaw right now. Um, yes, and there's no public right for use of the land, whether, whether it's um, landscaped or usable open space. It's the property of the owner of the building who can decide whether the public is allowed on and if so, under what circumstances. Um, I, yeah, I think that I think those are okay. the comments. I just do you want to discuss any of the let's substance do it. Please. tonight? Yep, let's um, go ahead. I guess a couple of things. I don't know where this where the at least seventy percent five percent of the area as a grade of less than 8%, how that got in Kelly's draft, but I left it in so we could discuss whether we wanted to keep keep the deletion or whether we're comfortable keeping in the um, 8%. So I think that would be a good topic for conversation. I, I do have an opinion on that. Please. Um, Overall, I, I, I think that striking that would probably remove a lot of nonconformities, um, just given the number of homes on hills. But given the scope of the article, given that we're really trying to, my, I think the article is focusing on how uh, open space is regulated in business districts. I would, for, for now, I'd actually like to keep unstrike that part. You know, one of the things that we can think about doing based upon Mr. Loretti's comment is slightly revise the two um, changes in the definitions so that they only apply to the business districts to make it more consistent with the scope of the article. And if we did that, would you still want to keep the 8% or remove it? I'd still be in. It's, I'd have to read it, but I, I'm sort of inclined to, to want to keep that part uh, to unstrike. Anything else, Steve? Nope. Ken. Sorry. What do you want to strike, Steve? Unstrike. What do you want to unstrike? Uh, so the um, the re so there's the current draft. Um, strikes the words at least 75% of the area has a grade of less than 8%. I'm proposing that we remove that strike out. I'm fine with that. So, if I had a hill, if this project is against a hill, let's say along Palmerville Road, you know, mm -hmm. where that's very steep. I'm not saying that's the point, because that's, that's a housing area, okay? Uh, then the slope behind it is greater than 8%. So we, I can't count that as, uh, uh, as open space. So that is my under that is what we have today, and you're right. Um, that's usable open usable space, but you could count it as landscape. landscape. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but we're talking about just uh, usable open usable. space. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so, you know, in areas where you're limited that way, let's say you had a nice terraced, uh, um, you know, switchback walking path with little mm -hmm. sitting areas or whatever, that can't be used as open space now because you're limited to this, because that area. So I think you're limiting the business growth in those areas for this happening. I think we should leave it striked for that reason. Okay. Uh, and 
that's I just think for opportunity so for, for that you know the only thing that I'll add is um, usable this is in the definition we would have to be specific that it is just struck for the business so if again if we're removing usable open space in the business then you're striking it for the residential which I think yep. is Steve's case to leave it in. Yeah, but if the right? the dimensional tables are also a part of this. Yes. Um, and basically, since five three twenty one is getting stricken. Yes. Um, the visit. So in the B districts, you just have a landscape open space requirement. So. Right. So it it's it sort of moot for the business districts because it doesn't apply there. Right. Understood, but it um, it's still something that again, if it if the definition applies both to business and residential, mm -hmm. so to keep it specific to the business, we would need to keep this in. Right, we could not strike it. Right, so to your point, I think we would unstrike it. Right, right, and we would have to come back next year. If we want to Correct. To that. Correct. Ken, did you have any other no. comments? Jean, no. anything else? Steve? Nope. Okay. So at that point, we will um, move on to Article C. Uh, uh, Article C is a zoning bylaw amendment related to rear yard setbacks in the business district. And I will again turn it over to Jean. So again, this, this was the first draft was done by Kelly. I did make a couple changes of it. Now, Kelly had three suggestions for us. If you look at the note on the second page, one suggestion is the variable um, rear yard setback, which is the one I put in. The, a second suggestion she had was no setback at all. And the third suggestion she had was a standard length setback, um, regardless of the size of the building or anything like that. I chose the variable one because I thought it was the most interesting of the three for us to discuss. Uh, the other thing that I did is that Kelly, in when she did this, only had it for mixed use and permitted use and other permitted use. And it sort of seemed to me if we were doing it for that, we might as well do it for apartments also. So it's consistent for buildings of a consistent size. So. That's what we've done here. So we're not getting rid of the rear yard setbacks, but we are, if we adopt this, we are making them variable depending on um, what's in back of the building. If it's just an alleyway, it's one thing. If it's a tall building and it abuts a residential, it's a bigger setback, if it's an even taller building. It's a bigger setback. So it's, it's in some ways similar to what it was before, except now it's more responsive to what's in back mm -hmm. and what's the size of the building. So that's it. Great, thank you. Steve. I, um, I think Mr. Benson made the right choice in choosing the variable one. Um, I do like it for precisely for the reason uh, it is con sensitive to what's uh, what's there. Um, I think it takes context into account well. Thank you. Thank you. Ken? I'm okay with it. Okay. Uh, so at this point, any other comments before we open public comment? All right, uh, so at this point, any uh, member of the public who wishes to speak on uh, this article, please raise your hand. Please. Could I ask that this be brought up on the screen so that you can see what Jean was talking about? Sure, absolutely. Sorry. No worry. I, I, I wanted to ask earlier about it. No problem. Here we go. The, 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 really, the one to look at is, is the, um, the note at the bottom of the chart, I think, Claire. There you go. Yeah, that's it. The one that's underlined. Great. Did you have any comment or do you want me to come back to you? I don't necessarily have any comment. I, I Thank you. Anyone else, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm Carl Wagner, Edge Hill Road. Um, 
I am concerned that, uh, like Article B, Article C is being presented with zero public uh, chance for uh, comment and uh, changes such as was done in 2019. This is one of the items that was in the 2019 density articles that the ARB was forced by the town meeting to uh, pull their support for because town meeting felt that it was not properly presented and the town meeting and the town of Arlington did not have proper input. I don't fully understand the changes, but it looks like it's a drastic limitation in the commercial districts, which can include mixed use now, so that means residential also. And I would ask the ARB to reject this and push it to a spring town meeting after the director of planning instituting proper public input meetings and uh, open forums. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments? Please. Aram Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. Aram Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. Uh, I would echo what Mr. Wagner says. Uh, there's a process issue. There has not really been an opportunity for public comment. Uh, this is very last minute. That's very antithetical to the spirit of consideration and debate that is typical of Arlington. In addition, this is the kind of discretion uh, that the ARB is trying to give itself, which frankly has rendered it unaccountable and has given people the impression that it's highly arbitrary. I don't think the ARB should have that kind of discretion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Please. Thank you, Chris Loretti, and 56 Adams Street. Um, you know, some people say that town officials want to turn Arlington into Somerville. And I was amused um, in looking at this particular article that when the planning department reviewed the regulations for various other towns, they picked the one that was basically the least um, restrictive, and that was the Somerville. So basic Somerville's regulations. So basically what is being proposed here is to adopt the Somerville zoning regulations for the rear yard setbacks for, uh, for business uses. Uh, I have a, lot, a number of problems with these. One, um, what it means, for example, for mixed use development is that you'd have a zero setback for a thing like the bike path because the bike path is next to a right of way. Um, if the right of way happens to be a street, then what you've got is a front yard, another front yard, and the, re the rear yard shouldn't even apply. It should be the front yard setbacks that apply. Um, there's also uh, some problems with the way the um, thing is worded. It talks about having a 30-foot setback if you're above a certain number of stories. And I'm wondering, is that another step back requirement, or just what does that mean? Is it the entire building that has to be back 30 feet or not? I would also add that um, rather than being based on the zoning district of the abutting lot, it should be based on the use. Because Arlington allows residential uses in business districts, it's more appropriate that it should, it's, it's how the lot adjoining the backyard is being used rather than what, it, what, what the district ha happens to be. So this one, uh, I think as others uh, preceding me have said, really needs a lot of work, and I would suggest uh, holding off on it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Please. Elizabeth Carr Jones, 1 Lehigh Street. Um, and I, if I could just ask you to project as much as you can. Okay. Thank you. I, yeah, I don't speak that loud. I understand. So I'll Thank do you. Do my best. Thank you. That's all I can ask. Um, okay, thanks. Um, so it looked to me, I haven't looked at this thoroughly, but it looked to me that, that the, only, the only properties that would be protected with this rear setback after this change would be single family homes. Is, is that correct? Because it looks like everything else is, is crossed off. We'll, 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 we'll clarify. We'll clarify. Okay. If you have any other comments yet, yeah, when we get to the end, we'll absolutely clarify yeah, that. Yeah, because it, it needs mm -hmm. to be clear that, you know, um, our two districts, which are very often abutting business districts, as you know, are, you know, would be uh, well protected from, um, you know, building up right next to it. So that was my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, comments? 
Okay, uh, seeing none, we will uh, return to the board for any discussion on Article C, and I'll start with Jean for uh, the clarification that was just requested. Yeah, let me just give a couple clarifications. So, Elizabeth, this applies, this applies to certain buildings in the business district. So if this building in back abuts a residential district, any residential district, they have to meet the setback requirements, any of them. Um, to a comment that this is discretionary, this basically takes away discretion. Well, it's, it, there's no discretion here anyhow. It just changes what the setback requirements are to better reflect the size of the building and what's behind the building. So we're attempting to put it in a better context than the context um, is now. I think those are the Great. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. Uh, Steve, any uh, additional commentary or thoughts on yeah, this article? I, I don't believe this was uh, ever proposed in 2019. Yeah, I don't think so. That, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, and this, just for clarification, all of these were originally uh, discussed at several redevelopment board hearings in the um, winter leading up to uh, ending up on the um, original spring um, Springtown meeting uh, agenda, which were then uh, requested to be moved to the fall because of the numerous articles that were already on the Springtown meeting that were not redeve uh, redevelopment board articles for clarification. Ken, any questions or thoughts on this particular article? No, I just want to echo the fact that what you just said. I think all these articles, not all, most of these articles, correct Steve, uh, were, had the proper um, hearings and so forth by the planning department for a presentation for the, uh, the spring uh, town meeting but we're asked to not present these and pull these articles to postpone them till the fall. And that's what we're doing right now. So that all the zoning articles could be heard together. Yes. With MBT communities. Okay, any other comments from the board before we move to the next article? Okay, uh, let's move to article D, which is the zoning bylaw amendment related to uh, step back requirements in the business districts. And I'll turn it over to Jean. Okay, so um, this I hope captures what we have talked about more than once at public meetings, um, which is number one, the step back would be along the principal facade of the building and not numerous and, and not numerous sides of the building. Second, and we didn't reach agreement on this, so it's in here so that we can discuss it. Should the step back be on the fifth floor or the fourth floor. Right now, it's on the fourth floor. This proposes to put up on the fifth floor. Um, that's for discussion. I clarified for a building with street frontage on Mass Ave or Broadway, the principal facade and principal property line are presumed to be facing Mass Ave or Broadway. Unless we determine otherwise, that gets rid of the, you know, it's on two corners, which is the principal facade. Um, and we say the other thing where we have disagreed with um, each other on how to interpret the bylaw in the past, it now says that it must be measured from the principal property line. It may be on the fifth floor or a combination of various story setbacks. So the fifth story is set back the required amount. So that means they could pull the entire building back seven and a half feet if they wanted to. They could pull the second floor back three feet and another floor back four feet. So when you get to this, the floor with the step back, you've reached the seven and a half feet. The only other thing I did is the step back requirements were located exactly the same almost in two parts of the zoning bylaw. So I deleted the second one, which was 5.3.21C, because it was the same thing that was in 5.3.17, and then we just re-lettered re what had been D and E to C and D. So I think the, the discussion for us really to have is it on the um, fifth floor or fourth floor, and are we comfortable with 
allowing the step backs to build up toward that floor. Great, thank you, Jean. Uh, we'll start with Ken. Um, I was always on board uh, to measure the setback from the property line. And yes, I was not. So as many yes. discussions. And uh, I was also on the line that uh, the, the fifth floor setback should be seven, seven and a half feet, irregardless of what's happening on, on the lower floors. It could be up and it could be up along the property line, or it could be set back from the property line. It, it doesn't matter. It's the top floor, which is actually the floor that's casting a shadow or casting whatever onto the street. That set back seven and a half feet. So, uh, so I'm not clear. Are you saying if if the building is pulled back seven and a half feet, the fifth floor would be have to pull back another seven and a no. half feet? No. Okay, so that it it would just be cumulative. Line, cumulative. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yes. Okay. And that's where you have it here. That's the way it is. Here. Yes, and and so I'm just saying I agree with everything here. So fourth floor or fifth floor? Fifth floor. You want the fifth floor, Steve? So there, um, I have. Two or three comments. Uh, one, the sentence, this requirement shall not apply to the buildings in the industrial district. We, um, we don't need that because the industrial district have their own. Right, but I, I'm hesitant to, the industrial districts, yeah, they have, it, it is a different set of rules, but step backs, there are no step back requirements in the industrial district. Um, so I would, ask that we okay. consider restoring that sentence. Okay. Um, in terms of where the setback is measured from, I would have actually preferred to say that it's, um, it is an increase over the yard setback, but since in these cases the yard setback is zero, it's okay to say measuring from the property line because you know it's, a, it's the same difference. Um, in terms of fourth or four or five, the fourth or fifth story, I'm um, I'm on the fence at the moment, so I'm on the fence. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I I agree with Steve. Um, I have no issue with our current requirement um, of the of the fourth floor. I think that it um, provides an opportunity for a more dynamic facade in terms of the height that we are uh, currently have permitted. Uh, within our zoning bylaw and the FAR modifications that were made recently as well. So you would put it at the fourth? Floor? I would keep it at the fourth. Yeah, floor. I would too. Sure. So I mean, that's something that we can continue to discuss um, this evening uh, after public comment, um, and then obviously again on on the second. Um, any other initial comments before we open this up to public comment? No. no. Okay. Great. Uh, any, if there are any members of the public who wish to speak on this article, please raise your hand. Please. Aaron Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. Uh, I, again, do not think this is a good idea. I think the critical thing here, as I am reading the original and comparing it uh, to what you're proposing, the original says that the setback shall be provided uh, along all building elevations. You are now limiting the setback to only one side of the building. I think that's rather poor treatment of people on the side streets, limiting this only to Mass Ave or Broadway. I think that does people on the side streets a disservice. Thank you. Any other comments? Please. Hi, my name is Laurel Kane, 79 Westmoreland Ave. And it's really just a, um, a comment to say that, again, as the layperson, this stuff is really hard to understand. And I respect that you have the hearing and are opening up for public comment, but for someone like me to even make an informed comment, I don't even really understand this. And I'm just, as a general comment, is there a mechanism by which the complex work that you do could be translated, say, by a 
an illustration, a picture, or some layer that makes it more accessible for people to understand what it is that you're proposing. And that's, I guess, a general comment, not probably specific to this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Please. Thank you, Chris Loretti, 56 Adam Street. I think it's important to remember um, back when the step backs were sold to town meeting. And they were sold to town meeting as a way of ameliorating the higher building heights um, that were allowed under other zoning changes. And the, the you know, expressed intent was to have those um, step backs on all street frontages, not just the um, just on one street, and also to start them at the fourth floor, and I think that's where they should remain. Most residents in town don't even want five-story buildings on Mass Ave and Broadway, and the master planning process showed that. Um, I think it's arbitrary to define the principal facade as on Broadway or Mass Ave. For a lot of these lots, particularly on Broadway, the longest street frontage is going to be on the side streets, and those side streets are typically less wide than Broadway or Mass Ave is. Those are the ones that really need the step back, not the not the um, you know the major thoroughfares. So I I believe they should you know, remain on both sides, and particularly if you're keeping them at just seven and a half feet from the property line, that that's really minimal. Um, you know, a lot of buildings are not built right up to the property line, so it's it's not a significant ask to do that. So I think this should be left exactly this you know bylaw change should not be made at all, and I look forward to arguing that at town meeting. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, so at this time, I'll turn it back to the board for any other clarifications or comments, and we'll start with Jean. I, I think the only clarification, first, I understand that this is a difficult topic. I taught zoning law, planning law for about a decade, and I know the time it took the students who were graduate students to get up to speed on it, so I understand that. Um, pictures would help. Um, the only thing, other thing I'll say is we're not saying the principal facade and property line are Mass Ave or Broadway. So we're saying they're presumed to be, but that can be changed. So if it's a little bit on Broadway and a lot on the side street, we can determine that that's a more appropriate place. So that's the only other clarification I'll make. Great. Thank you. Kim? No. Steve? Um, so, in terms of four versus five, I think we landed on four. Uh, well, we, we gave were, it. Sorry. Uh, Jean and I, I think, are comfortable with four. You were on the fence, and Kim um, is interested in, in us uh, moving to five. So, I think that's still up for discussion. Okay, I will. I will join you on the four side. Okay. Any other discussion? No. Okay. Uh, let's move to the next uh, article E, which is the zoning by law amendment related to reduced height buffer area. And I'll turn this one over to Jean. Okay, this, this is exactly what Kelly drafted a long time ago. I, I've said this to um, Rachel. If you look at the Warren article, it says 5.5.2. I looked all over 5.5.2 and I could find nothing to amend, to put it in scope. So you see what this says. I'm not sure the lower height numbers make a lot of sense, but I just don't think this is in scope and I don't think we should go, go along with it. Thank you, Jean. Um, as Jean and I were looking with this one, I. Um, I agreed with that as well. Um, we can certainly talk about it, but I would be interested in us uh, discussing this one a little bit further and perhaps coming back um, in the in the spring with a modified article. Ken? Did we talk about this before? We did. This was one of the articles that we had on for, for the spring. We, we talked about it before, but we didn't talk about the we lower height on the numbers. Right. And again, I think there's a mismatch between the warrant article and what we've done here. So you're saying this, go ahead and, uh, your suggestion is to go ahead and strike this from this fall? 
to okay. vote no action and to not move this one forward until we have more opportunity to um, explore this one further. I'll be okay with that. Steve? So this one is actually interesting. The height buffer areas, or the height buffer um, distances, were in the 1975 version of this bylaw, where the planned unit development district allowed 200 foot buildings, and the R7 and B5 allowed 110 feet. Now, each of those zoning districts was down zoned at some later, some later year in the 70s and 80s, um, but no one ever moved the height buffer. Mm. Uh, it's and the last, the last one, I've dug, I've tried to chase down as much primary source documents like ARB minutes, town meeting transcripts to see if it was ever discussed, and it was never discussed. So this just seems like an internal inconsistency that crept up over uh, a couple of years of successive down zonings. Um, but in terms of just, you know, the, you know the, the geometry of the triangle, we've changed the height, but we haven't changed the base. And I think it's worth at least the changing the, in the, in the spring perhaps, change, changing the base to get back to what, where it originally was. Yep. That's fair. I think that was the original intent. Um, I think that, uh, again, with the um, specific lower height that, mm -hmm. that we're looking to achieve that um, some additional study would be beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other comment? Well, it's not just a clarification, lower, not lower height we're um, seeking to achieve, but the lower height that prior town meetings oh, but Yes, I'm sorry, it was not clear. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Uh, any, uh, so at this point I'll open this up for public comment. Any comment on this particular article? Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Carl Wagner, Precinct 15, Town Meeting Member and Edge Hill Road Resident. Um, this is another of the articles that uh, were before the uh, Town Meeting in 2019 and which were given extensive uh, chance for the public to hear about them, if not to change them, by the Planning Director in the 2018-2019 period. I don't know if people online can see or if the 13 members of the public that showed up here for this can see, but you're proposing, the town of Arlington is proposing for the ARB uh, to reduce the height buffers by uh, uh, three quarters. Uh, and people who live in, in single, two-family, or people who appreciate open space that back up against these buildings are going to have enormous buildings that are being proposed by other articles, the MBTA density overlay, much, much closer to them. And uh, the, the big problem is, despite words to the contrary, I think it really is bogus uh, to say that any of this was given to the town prior to the spring town meeting. This has not been open to meetings like these 13 people here. We are seeing this for the first time, and I ask the ARB respectfully to vote no action on B, C, and this, D, as well as the rest of these items, and push them to a spring town meeting and ask the planning director and the town, which works for the businesses and the residents of Arlington, to give presentations where people can give proper input. This is a rush job, and we don't deserve this. These volunteers do not deserve having to have an employee that works for me doing this. Thank you. Any other comments? Please. Aram Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. I second what the previous speaker said, and I do not think the Redevelopment Board uh, should have this kind of discretion. A previous speaker, um, oh, two speakers ago, just said this is highly technical, difficult to understand, and some pictures would really help. I think that with the delay in doing this, you not only could allow the public debate, you could put together some visuals, some pictures, which explains what this is so that people will get a handle on it. I think if this passes, it will add to the popular perception that the Redevelopment Board is a, is a body that is simply responsive to developers, but not to the citizens uh, who pay for it. Thank you. Any other comments? Please. Yeah, okay, that's what it's not. 
Thank you, Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. Again, um, I think just to echo uh, Mr. Um, Benson's comments, I mean, this the way the bylaw language change is put in is way outside the scope of the article, which deals with variable rear yard setback. So I'm assuming that's why um, you don't want to go forward with this, and I would completely support that. But even um, thinking about this in the future for the spring, I mean, what's, what's proposed completely eviscerates the height buffer. Um, this reference to not being detrimental based upon criteria established in section 3.3.3 and 3.3.4 is completely meaningless because those sections have absolutely nothing to do um, with, with the height of the building or um, you know, relevant criteria like, of things like solar access. If, ta if the redevelopment board wants to get rid of height buffer areas, they ought to just put that before a town meeting and be honest about it rather than uh, you know, doing away with it the way it, it's done here. Um, but you really don't need to do that because you already have the power on a case-by-case -case basis just to waive the height buffer area if you can show, or if you can find rather, that the budding properties are not adversely affected. And if you can't find that, and if the ZBA can't find that, then I think you really need to ask yourselves why you would want to do away with it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. At this time, we will uh, move back to discussion by the board. I will start with Jean. Just for clarification for people who don't understand this, in a very few places in the zoning bylaw, buildings can be two different heights. What this says is if you have two different height options, you have to use the lower height option if you're within a certain number of feet of some of the residential districts, unless in this case, the ARB finds it's not detrimental. This is basically changing the wording, changing the height, but we're not bringing this to town meeting. It's not ready to go to town meeting. Great. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Steve, any uh, additional good. comment? Nope. Ken? No. Great. Thank you. We will move on to uh, agenda item, or excuse me, article G. I'm no, sorry, no. Article F, thank you. Uh, the zoning by law amendment for corner lot requirements, and I'll hand it over to Jean. Okay, um, you can read it, it's only three sentences that's added. It basically says that in the business districts, the setbacks are the setbacks prescribed in the business district, and what might, and not the setback from farther down the street in the residential district. This has come up a lot of times where we've had to waive this because the building is either already there or it sort of doesn't make any sense to not give it the ability to go to the property line and there's no adverse impact. So we had discussed that this was just a way to clarify that this is the way we have been doing this up to this point. And, and makes it easier for everyone to understand. Great. That's it. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Ken. Yeah, can I ask? I know it's only a couple sentences. I just want to make sure I'm perfectly clear what's going on here. So the two front, the two sides of the building are facing the street are considered front yard setbacks. The other two sides of that let's say a square property is considered a side yard setbacks. So there is no rear, rear yard setback now on a corner lot. That hasn't changed. That has not changed. Okay, so all we're saying is that uh, the two front yards continue all the way down to the end of, the, of, the, of that front yard. So it doesn't step back. It doesn't it's step nothing back. about step backs. It's that, about it doesn't step do, backs. It doesn't, address what's next to it on right. that street. Right. Okay. Steve. Um, yeah, I'm in favor of this. That's that's all I have to say. Okay, great, <laughs> thank you. Um, at this point, we'll open it up for any comment. Elizabeth Carr Jones, 1 Lehigh Street, projecting better. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
I wondered about the roadway visibility um, issues with um, especially going around uh, corners that are narrower and um, built up. You know, I, I uh, think there's a there's a requirement or the, a law bylaw that that restricts buildings from or any anything uh, from obstructing the view. You know, within a certain um, a certain area for uh, roadway visibility. Um, you know, would this essentially throw that out the window if 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 it no, or, so it would still apply. So the we'll we'll, we'll take that okay. one and we'll clarify yeah. that um, we'll after everything. But we will absolutely clarify that for you. Terrific. Thank yes, you. you're welcome. Any other uh, questions, comments? Please. Thank you, Crystal Reddy, Adam Street. I, I find this one completely unacceptable. I think it's important for people to understand that it's not the properties down the street, it's the abutting properties. So if you're on a side street, um, you know, in next to a corner lot, and there's a mixed-use development going up, there's zero front yard setback and zero side yard setback. And you could have a five-story building built right next to you. Uh, unfortunately, the development that the redevelopment board approved um, for it's called Mystic Wine uh, on Broadway isn't very far along in its construction, but I wish it had been much farther along because people could really see what sort of damage this type of change allows. Uh, and I thought I was a bit amused that uh, Mr. Benson mentioned you were giving waivers. If you think you have the power to give waivers, why do you even need the zoning change? Of course, you really don't have that power, and you're not going to have a town council, um, or hopefully you won't have a town council very soon, that thinks you, you have that power either. So I think you ought to scrap this and, uh, and go back to the drawing board. This, this is one that's um, potentially very damaging to people who live in homes next to Mass Ave, when lots next to Mass Ave or Broadway, and even, even homes that are interspersed with business lots on those roads as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? OK. Uh, seeing oh, I'm so sorry. Didn't see your hand. Is there a hand? Okay. Hi. Thank you. Thank um, you. Matt Miller, uh, 42 Columbia Road. Um, my thought is just uh, if it could be uh, brought up in discussion by by ARB, um, what happens here uh, for like snow removal? And uh, I know that if you have a building that is um, there's buildings down on Broadway that are a concern uh, because you can't really see around when you're making a right turn. And, you know, there's a lot of traffic sometimes on that road. And so um, I think that if we change it, uh, it, it would be worth considering if there's going to be impact on traffic. And, you know, because we are talking about what's evident, uh, eventually going to have higher traffic going through the roads. Um, not that we need to study or delay or anything, but it needs to be a consideration. And so I, I just hope that that's uh, something that is being discussed with you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Please. Patnakar Velenki, 21 Adam Street. Um, I just wanted to address uh, the chair and the 14 people present, by the way, not 13th. 13 mm -hmm. people. And this, uh, you know, every person matters, right? Um, so a couple of things. I just wanted to say on record that I'm in favor of this. Um, and to other speakers, right, who brought up traffic concerns and others, I just wanted to give a number. In 1970, as per U.S. Census 1970, this town had 17% more population than what it is today. And this town had um, 10 percentage points more people who were under 18 living in this town. So this town has supported far more people, far more vehicles, and far more density than what it is there today. Um, so I don't think we should be worried about you know, traffic and other concerns that this will bring in. I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All 
right, at this time I will turn it back to discussion for the board and Steve, I believe that you were interested in addressing the question regarding um, uh, corner lot visibility. Yes, uh, so I, I actually have two follow-up comments, but I'll start with that one. Please. So the requirements for, cor for visibi the, the visibility around corner lots only apply in the R districts. So this, that, it's, it, it's what the bylaw says, <laughs> but it, it's only in the it's only in the R district. So there's you, you need a 20 foot line 20 foot line of sight from the corner back um, with a free with a, a clear height of uh, between three feet and seven feet above the curb. But it, it's only a residential district requirement. It's not a business district requirement. Should should we explain why in terms of the street width and sidewalk width? Do you, do you want to just address? So the, I'll let you take that. Sure. So, um, really, that has to do a lot with the um, with the narrower roads and the um, narrower uh, sidewalk width, et cetera, uh, within the residential lots. Why? Which is why it is in that section and not in some of the business districts, which deal with um, wider roads such as Mass Ave and and Broadway in that area. And the second thing I wanted to mention. There is a section in the bylaw um, which um, it's five three sixteen if anyone matters. But during during uh, environmental design review, we do have the ability to make adjustments to yard setbacks. So what's proposed here is basically just um, taking what we've generally been doing and making it more obvious to people. Yeah, the, the, the other thing I will add is, is you probably know that in a lot of places, the older homes don't meet the current standards for lot size, setbacks, things like that. So you could have a street with a lot of older homes with 10 feet setbacks, even though the requirement is 15, but you'd require the building on Mass Ave Corner to have a 15 foot setback, which is a little bit crazy in my opinion. Kid, any other clarifications or comments? No, I was, uh, the questions you guys asked earlier was fine for me. Okay, great. Any other comments, Jean, Steve? Nope. Okay, um, let's go to uh, Article G, which is the zoning bylaw amendment related to height and story minimums in the business district. So we, we had this discussion we had this discussion at a, Claire, can you move it to the next one, yes. please? Thank you. We had this discussion at a few of our meetings um, when one place came to us, they wanted to build a new building, only one story high on Mass Ave, and we felt like we didn't have the authority to say no, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense these days to have one story buildings on on Mass Ave or Broadway anymore. So what this basically does is say in the business districts, buildings shall have a minimum of two stories and 26 feet in height. Both stories shall be usable. Um, doesn't um, apply to single family residential buildings. The reason it does not is there's something in Chapter 40A that says we can't regulate the interior size of a single family residential building. And I'm concerned that it could be interpreted for two stories. So for safety's sake, we're not applying it to single family residential buildings and we can waive it or modify it if it's infeasible. For example, if somebody wanted to put a new gas station somewhere, we would say, sure, you know, you don't have to put apartments above the gas station. Um, the only thing I would ask you is, I chose 26 feet in height, you should decide whether that's an appropriate height to go along with the two stories. That's it. Thank you, Jean. Um, the only thing that I will mention too is that if we um, move forward with the with uh, Article I, then we would not need the section. Except this may pass, and I may not. That's what I'm saying. But yes, it's it's mm -hmm. just we right. We can remove it next year. Right, exactly. So the, the two might be interdependent. Okay, uh, Steve. Um, one of the, I was, the, an earlier version of this um, 
had tables which said 25 feet and the text that said 26. Um, I'm okay with either of them as long as we pick one. Well, we don't have the table anymore. <laughs> we don't have the table anymore, so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm no, no questions. Great, Ken? Uh, to answer your question earlier, Gene, uh, what I think, okay, is um, for a, a retail business or a business district, it, for an office it's much smaller, but say for retail, that, uh, good height is like uh, 14 to 18 feet clear. So 14 to 18 feet floor to floor would be a comfortable level for a, re a residential, for a retail space. And then add another you know, floor 26, I think uh, the number you select is, is quite comfortable. I'm just trying to say I, I'm, I'm okay with that. And I think that that is consistent with elsewhere where 13 feet floor to floor has been mm -hmm. um, yeah. what we have been adopting okay. within the other sections of the bylaw. Any other comments? Okay, we'll move this one uh, for uh, any public comments. Please raise your hand if you'd like to speak on this item. Elizabeth Cardoons, 1 Lehigh Street. Um, I've heard this board many times talk about um, not wanting to restrict the flexibility of different businesses and different um, you know development opportunities in town i found myself thinking well you know what if somebody wanted to open up a um, you know a little like greenhouse business like uh was it pemberton you know on mass ave in in, in cambridge that you wouldn't allow that if if this went through. Um, I don't understand why it would would help um, to restrict certain types of businesses that might want to open up here um, unnecessarily. That's all. Thank you. We'll address the flexibility um, at the end. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Carl Wagner, Precinct 15 Town Meeting Member and Edge Hill Road Resident. The problem with these articles, and this one particularly, is that the business renters and the business owners don't know you're doing this. I should say you're doing this, and that the ARB is forced to review this. We're sitting here with very few people. This may be an okay proposal. I'm not a business renter or owner. It strikes me that you're instituting a restriction on on business owners and that will probably result if it goes through in business buildings being sold and us losing more and more of our struggling businesses so I'm concerned about that the main thing is that the people of Arlington the taxpayers who are businesses and residents deserve to have this discussed over a period of meetings not in one rainy session at the ARB in a rush job before a special town meeting I ask you, like with the other uh, articles that are before you this evening, to push this to town meeting in the spring and to vote no action on this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Please. Aram Holman, 12 Whittemore Street, town meeting member, Precinct 6. Again, I think that giving the redevelopment board, this kind of rediscretion, this kind of discretion, uh, allows for the public perception that the redevelopment board can be swayed by developers and lawyers, uh, but not ordinary residents. Uh, I urge you to vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, we will turn this back to the board. Um, there was a question about um, the restriction of flexibility. Gene, if you can talk about how that still remains within this, um, the way that this is, is written, that would be helpful. Yeah, it's the second sentence which says we may make, waive or modify the uh, height and story requirements. So in the example of the Pemberton Farms thing, we have the ability to say, okay, that's fine. You can um, go ahead. Um, you know, it, it's it's interesting because zoning is always a little bit 
of a tug between how much do you want allow people to do what they want with their land and how much are there certain um, limits that for the sake of the town and what we think the town is and should be need to be there. We, I think, in the past in discussing this had felt like no limitations in the business district allowing one-story buildings where there could have been more was a big mistake and it was an opportunity to say if you're going to build a new building it has to be at least two stories high. This does not require any of the one-story buildings to get torn down or a second story to be built. They'll all just be considering non-conforming and for the rest of their existence, they can continue to exist as one-story buildings. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Steve, any so, additional comments? Yeah, so part one of the motivations for this is to encourage, you know, as sites are redeveloped, um, higher value buildings that result in new growth and ideally would mean fewer overrides or smaller overrides. So, um, you know, the minimum, the minimum height is something new for Arlington, as far as I know, but I, I think it's a small step in the right direction. Great. Thank you, Steve. Good point. Uh, Kim? Yeah, I echo uh, Steve's comments. Great. Thank you. Well put. Uh, any other comment before we move on? Then let's move on to uh, Article H, which is an administrative correction, Gene. All right, so this is um, pretty simple. Last year, town meeting deleted a paragraph from section 8.1.3, and it re-lettered the other paragraphs accordingly. So what had been paragraph E is now paragraph D. So now we just have to go back, now that that was done, and amend the one reference. So there's one reference that says, refers 8.1.3e, there's no longer 8.1.3e. Last year it was re-lettered at 8.1.3d, so this just makes that administrative correction. Thank you, Jean. Uh, any uh, comments, Ken? None. Steve? None. And I don't have any either. We'll open this one up for public comment. Any comments? Okay, uh, move it back to the board. Uh, this is a simple, straightforward correction. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? No. Moving on. Uh, we will uh, now move to Article E, which is the zoning bylaw amendment related to residential uses in the business districts. And I will turn it over to Jean. Okay, so this, this is fairly simple, but um, very interesting, let's say. So right now, um, you're allowed to build a single family home or a two family dwelling, duplex dwelling in any of the business districts as of right. And as you know, there are some in the business districts as of right. In thinking about Mass Ave and Broadway and the other small places with business districts and a lot of discussions the board has had over time, the thought was it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to allow new single family or two family buildings in the business districts. So the business districts hopefully will be much more for business than they are for small, single and two family homes. Um, so all this basically does is say there's no more right to build single family and two family in those districts. You can, however, keep them. They'll just become non-conforming uses. You don't have to get rid of them. Um, if you want to put an ADU on them, you can still put an ADU on them. We didn't change those requirements. Um, there, there is one thing that I went back and forth about, and I think the board should have some discussion about it. There are a lot of tables in the business district for height, setbacks, dimensions. At first, I went through all of those and crossed out single family, two family, and duplex. And then when I redid this, I said, no, no, I shouldn't do that because they're still there as non-conforming uses. And we should still, as structures, I'm sorry, non-conforming 
and uses, and therefore we should still have what the dimensions, the setbacks, things like that are. Because if we don't have them, all of a sudden they could decide they're going to go up to the property line, higher, etc. So after a lot of consideration, and some of you may think I've made a mistake with this, I decided just to change the use tables and none of the dimensional tables for those. Thank you, Gene. Starting with Ken. I'm in agree agreement with you, Gene. I think leaving the uh, restrictions in uh, for the one and two story uh, families in the business is, is, is good. Uh, just in case they're not performing, but we, they, we should keep them as not performing existing, not so they can expand upon it. I, I, um, I agree with Mr. Benson with regard to leaving the single family, two family, and duplex in the dimensional tables. Um, I think that um, that's some good foresight. Great, thank you. Uh, at this point, we'll open uh, up for public comment. Any member of the public wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Carl Wagner, Precinct 15 Town Meeting member and Edge Hill Road resident, I was just whispering with another member of the public here because the public are not aware of what exactly this is and it sounds like it's not properly presented or researched. I am part owner of a business district single family home. Uh, the people of Arlington should be aware that it appears what's happening here in this muddle is that you will be prevented in the future from building a single family or two family if you wanted to in the business districts, but you will of course not be prevented if you are a large developer from doing mixed use. I think that changes like this may not be wrong, Madam Chair, but I think that the town is a democracy and the town meeting members deserve, especially if they live in these B districts in non-conforming residential uses, or if uh, they have constituents who live in these areas, people deserve to have a debate and a discussion about this that's not being provided in this charade tonight and I ask you therefore to push it to Springtown meeting have meetings and vote no action on this thank you thank you uh, any other discussion please in the back hey, Matt Miller um, 42 Columbia Road I agree with what was just stated. I think that uh, there should not, there should be a reason for such a change in the regulation. Uh, maybe it's because the town wants more revenue from businesses, that's fine. But there, I haven't heard a reason for a change such as this. And this could prevent uh, potential future business owners from building a house. Uh, there's places like, uh, I don't know, you look at DeVito's funeral home, that was a house, I'm sure. Uh, there's certain understanding that I think the people of Arlington should understand. And I, I, haven't, I haven't been presented with a reason. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Lorty. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Lorty. to start my clock. Adam Street. Um, I guess the one word I would describe this article as is a historical. Um, Section 5.3, on districts and purposes is describing the zoning districts as they are, not how you would like them to be. So when it says the B1 district is predominantly one and two family houses, which may be used solely as homes, uh, or they are one or two family homes that may be used as uh, homes, offices, or a combination of the two, and that's because they were constructed as homes years ago, um, either before zoning came to Arlington or, or shortly thereafter. And these are homes that people use. Um, you know, they change from one to the other. And, and that's what most of the B1 district is. I don't see any need to ban those homes and make them non-conforming. Um, I would question how often new one and two family homes are being constructed in the B district. I sure don't see them. And what you're doing is burdening all those people who already own those homes. You're not, these, you're not continuing their non-conformity. You're making them non-conforming. 
So if there's a business in one of these homes, that home cannot be converted back to residential use by right. Um, or you can't convert a one family to a two family by right in that zone anymore once you make that change. So I would, I would um, leave you with two questions. One, did you notify all the property owners of one of two family homes in the business districts about this change and the fact that you might be making their homes non-conforming? And just how many one and two family homes, new homes, not replacement, new homes, have been constructed in the business districts in the past five years? Because this article seems more driven by ideology than by history or the fact of the way development's occurring in Arlington today. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Aaron Holman, 12 Whittemore Street, town meeting member, Precinct 6. My comments echo what previous commenters uh, said. I think this will incentivize those owners of houses in the business district too, as their houses age, uh, build something else which will be much larger, which will be comparable to the ugly sardine can built between the high school and stop and shop, uh, which you approve. And those buildings that are now there were protected because the lots were relatively small. They cannot support the kind of sardine can model uh, you have approved. So there is no need for this article. People are perfectly capable of tearing these down and building larger edifices without being given the burden of being made non-conforming. So I respectfully say this article should not pass, and at the very least, it should pass as with all of these, with considerably more public discussion and debate than you are having now. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. I'll turn it back to the board for discussion, and um, I'll start with Jean. Um, just a couple of things. So 5.5.1 is districts and purposes. So I'm sure if we didn't amend 5.5.1 to get rid of one and two family in that, we would be criticized for having left it as a purpose. And that's why I did the deletion from 5.5.1. Again, this does not require anyone to tear down a house. It does not incentivize anyone to tear down a house. It doesn't make the small lots bigger, so all of a sudden they can build mixed use. All it does is say, um, and they can all stay there as one or two families. All it basically says is in our business districts, we have enough one and two family houses and we need more business properties. And as Steve said about the other thing, let's get some more growth in town to help with our tax tax. Steve? Want to say that again? Yeah, well, uh, uh, sure, I'll, I'll say it again. Um, you know, again, the. No, I, I think we're, uh, where I feel we're coming out as a board is we want to ensure that properties in the business districts stay used as businesses. Um, and where possible, we would like to encourage uh, when, you know, as properties turn over and are redeveloped, um, higher value, more tax generating properties than less expensive, lower tax generating properties. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Kim? No, I'm all set. Great. Um, I will also remind everyone that in addition to the hearing today and the discussion that has um, been, uh, that has taken place at meetings prior today, today on all of these articles, that the uh, place when this debate occurs is at town meeting. Town meeting is the body that votes and uh, decides on whether to pass these articles or not. That does not happen solely through the recommendation of the redevelopment board. So in case that has been unclear through the comments that have been made this evening, I do want to address that. I also want to address, um, there have been um, some pointed comments that these have been driven by the uh, Director of Planning and Community Development. These uh, articles that have all been presented this evening um, have been uh, brought about through the discussion with public 
and uh, with the members of the uh, redevelopment board in concert with the uh, excellent staff that we have in the Department of Planning Community Development. It has been a joint effort that supports our master plan and many of the other documents that we've adopted as a town, by town meeting, and through uh, much public debate. Steve. I was going to say, I think a few of them, these articles predate the current director of planning and community development. <laughs> well, thank you for the clarification. Any other comments on this article before we move to uh, the last? Okay. Uh, let us move to Article J, which is the Zoning Bylaw Amendment related to street trees. Um, a couple of years ago, town meeting adopted a Zoning Bylaw Amendment requiring street trees in the business districts for redevelopment at least every 25 linear feet of lot frontage. Um, this year, Claire, can you, he's asking the screen to move. Thank you. Um, this year, um, based on some comments we got from, I think it's called Green Streets Arlington, about the need for more street trees and what to do um, if MBTA communities passes with those residential places the need for better street canopy. We have amended the current bylaw to apply it to both residential districts too. Um, in addition, since all of the previous ones were subject to review by the redevelopment board, but not everything in the residential district is, we've expanded that. So if it's a case in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals, let's say it's a request for um, um, a special permit from them, they would have the ability to say, okay, you don't need to put the trees there for whatever reasons are here. If it's not in the jurisdiction of the Redevelopment Board or the Zoning Board of Appeals, then the Department of Planning and Community Development could make the decision, and we have not changed the criteria for the decision making about when a tree is not required, but it's, it's um, basically where there's no other suitable location, there can be a payment to the tree fund instead. So the criteria haven't changed. It's just basically applying it to residential and deciding who gets to decide if there's going to be a waiver. That's it. Thank you. Jean. Uh, Steve. Uh, no comments, questions at the moment. Great. Ken? Uh, just one. There was one section there where um, the Redevelopment Board and the Zoning Board may grant the increase in spacing if there's a conflict with the existing trees. We, I didn't change that at all. I realize that. <laughs> I'm just bringing that up, Gene. Yep. Because uh, it also says that. Uh, it, it seems like it may get too dense and there's too many trees because they don't get a chance to grow if you get them too dense. Well, well I'm, that, I'm that's why this is every 25 linear feet. Yes, but this, but you're saying we can increase it if if, uh, if there's existing trees. Uh, that increase the number of trees, increase the spacing, spacing between them, so greater oh, than 25. Okay, fair enough. Then I was just reading that. You left out the word spacing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. I do like the part that uh, you did uh, add about where it is not feasible, then uh, there's other ways to go about by either putting into a fund, plant trees elsewhere, stuff like that, but not to say uh, it's not feasible, we're not going to do it. Great. Thank you, Ken. Any other comments? All right. At this time, we will open this article up for public comment. Any? Please. Elizabeth Carr Jones, One Lee High Street. Um, thank you for misreading something, because like I totally did that tonight, and <laughs> I feel a little better now. <laughs> um, so, but, but I wanted to thank the the redevelopment board for for bringing this forward. This was something that um, that uh, Green Streets Arlington, which is members of the Open Space Committee, the Tree Committee, 
and the Finance Committee um, uh, put before uh, the, uh, the uh, planning board, or the planning um, department, through their um, representative, and um, we are grateful to see to see this this happen now, um, as, especially with the MBTA communities coming online. It's um, it's really important, um, and uh, we'd be glad to hear any um, any further questions you might have on on how it should be implemented. Great, thank Thanks. you. Anyone else? Chris. Kristen Anderson, 12 Upland Road West, and um, I just want to uh, thank you for, for bringing this. Um, I'm in full support of it. Um, I find that um, having trees, especially uh, along Mass Ave, will make it far more walkable for people to get to businesses, um, to uh, encourage that business use. Um, uh, so I'm, in, I'm in, in support of it. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair, Carl Wagner, Precinct 15, Town Meeting Member, and uh, Edge Hill Road resident. I think this is laudable. However, it should be pointed out that in the 9-11 uh, ARB meeting, the proposed uh, amendment would get rid of all open space in the density overlay that's being looked at in Arlington. So it feels like this is like having a night out smashing windows and then going to confession for the next day with a priest. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, on that note, we will uh, close public comment for the evening. And uh, I will turn it back over to the board for any uh, comments, uh, further comments regarding Article J, starting with Jean. I should have mentioned one thing. There's, there's a similar requirement in the MBTA community's draft. So if that goes through and town meeting passes it, we need this too because you can't have anything for MBTA communities that's stricter than you have in your underlying zoning. So we need this added so it meshes, and so if MBTA communities passes, we get much more tree canopy over the decades. Thank you for the clarification, Jean. Uh, Steve, anything further? So yeah, usually I'm, you know, usually take pretty seriously the um, whenever we add requirements to new development that weren't applicable to others or to previous developments. In this case, I think it's, um, I think it's, you know, the long-term benefit warrants doing, doing so. And as properties are redeveloped, including in residential neighborhoods, uh, I hope to see this uh, help to build up the town's tree canopy over time. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ken. No. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Uh, so uh, with that, we will close. I keep forgetting to turn off my timer. Uh, with that, we will close. <laughs> perfect timing. We will close the uh, Warren articles for uh, the, the public hearing for uh, Warren articles for fall 2023 uh, special town meeting. As I mentioned before, on October 2nd, uh, the redevelopment board will meet again to deliberate. Um, and uh, vote on wh whether to recommend action or no action on uh, each of the articles we heard this evening, as well as the MBTA Communities Act uh, article. Uh, if you do have any additional comment for anyone who's not able to join us this evening or anyone who was here who wishes to um, uh, send us any additional thoughts, um, please do so in writing. You can send them directly to me, to any member of the board, um, to Director uh, Claire Ricker, and we would be more than happy to um, address those. Any questions you might have or any comments? Before October 2nd. Before October 2nd, yes. Before, before October 2nd. Um, let's see. So with this, we will move to agenda item number three, which is the upcoming meeting schedule. Um, and uh, I'd love to go through what our, our current meetings are. We had also tentatively look to add a meeting to the redevelopment board schedule on October 10th for the purpose of uh, reviewing and approve and voting to approve uh, the uh, ARB uh, report to town meeting. 
um, which is something that needs to be prepared following our October 2nd meeting. So Claire, I will turn it over to you. I know that you were looking to see whether or not uh, that date of October 10th was something that looked to be feasible by uh, you and your, your team. Fantastic, yeah, thank you. Um, when we went over this, uh, the meeting schedule over the summer, we had left open um, the schedule for ARB meetings in October, knowing that there was a, a special town meeting schedule. Um, currently, um, were we to stay on our regular, um, every, every two weeks, if we met on the second, the next two opportunities would be on the 16th and then again on the 23rd. Um, the chair has uh, suggested uh, a meeting uh, potentially on the 10th, um, which is uh, out of, um, you know, sort of Our out of cycle, out yep. of sequence to what we usually do. Um, I, I think the 10th is, is, a, uh, is a good timeline. Um, it's one that the department can respond to. Um, and we should be able to have a, a draft report at that point for your, uh, for your uh, review and approval. The ninth right, is a you. holiday. Pardon. The ninth is a holiday. Right. The ninth is a holiday. It's right. Indigenous Peoples Day, so that's why we are proposing to meet on the tenth. Okay. So we would still need to post the um, agenda items for the meeting on the tenth. I believe on Thursday, Correct. the Thursday before, because of the fact that the ninth is a uh, holiday and the town offices are closed. Okay. So that would mean we will vote on the second, and uh, we will need to. Um, we will need to post the draft of the report on the 5th. Right, so um, is there... A I'm fine with the 10th. You're fine with the 10th? 10th? I'm fine tenth. with the 10th. Okay, is there... I think we need to, to officially vote on that. So is That's there um, a motion to uh, schedule a meeting of the Redevelopment Board on October 10th? So motioned. Second. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Uh, Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So we will now add October 10th at 7.30 p.m. to our schedule. Here? Yes. Yeah. That would be here. Thank you. Um, and then we currently have a meeting um, on our calendar for the night of the 16th. Um, I don't believe that we currently have anything scheduled for that meeting. Um, so at, I believe that on the second, what I'd like to do is to make a call as to whether or not to um, eliminate that meeting. Town meeting does start the next night. Um, and then we have a meeting I think we had tentatively scheduled for the 23rd. We do have town meeting that evening. So if we do need to meet that evening, um, we could meet at 7 p.m. as we've done before, but again, I think let's let's see what we have leading up to that meeting, and then we can make the call as to whether or not mm -hmm. to adjust that meeting date as we get closer to October. Fantastic. Great. Uh, at this time, I will see Steve. Just a, um, regarding the meeting on October 2nd. Yes. Would we want to? Would it be worth considering put, having an earlier start time? Just um, because we have quite a bit to get go through that night, uh, or are we comfortable with seven thirty till midnight? I'm just looking at the time there. I'm more comfortable with seven thirty just because I will I will be coming up from Norwood. Oh, okay. And uh, I have a tough time getting here uh, with traffic. I'm right. assuming. I will make sure I am I am stocked up with coffee for the following morning. Fabulous, <laughs> fabulous. Sorry about that. No worries. Okay. It's all good. Um, I will uh, work with Claire too to see if we have anything else on the agenda for that evening, and um, we will we will look to make sure that the majority of the agenda is uh, the uh, deliberation and voting on the ten uh, articles. We will have also. We'll need to discuss the timing. There it is a um, citizen article, zoning article, that needs to be noticed um, that I believe we, uh, we, we're we working together with town council to determine whether or not that can also occur on the 2nd or whether or not we need to um, hear that article on the 10th. So we will update the board on that as well. 
And I believe that that is everything uh, related to our upcoming meeting schedule. So with that, is there a motion to adjourn? Just, just oh, sorry. So on the 10th, we're going to be reviewing the report. Correct. So the report's going to have to include our recommendation on the citizen warrant article. Unless right? we, right. So Unless we're going to have to discuss it on the 2nd. We are going to try to, to hold that hearing on the, on the 2nd. And again, okay. we need to look at the timing okay. for that. If that does not occur, I have spoken with the moderator and um, he is willing to accept um, an, uh, a, a uh, report to town meeting and then an amended report to town meeting that includes that article, which will occur after, as is typical, after all of the other zoning articles. So it would be later in town meeting. Can we get copies of the citizen file? I have not received it myself, so as soon as uh, we receive it, we will distribute it uh, to the board. Any other questions related to schedule? Okay, that closes agenda item number three, and I will see if there uh, is a motion for agenda item number four, which is to adjourn. So motioned. Second. Second. Take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.